four better now. Can, can everybody hear me? Just nod. Okay, you guys can hear me? Okay, so I'm just gonna read an opening prayer. I'm gonna turn it over to Elaine and she's gonna describe everything about naturevation and also describe how the game's gonna work. While Elaine's doing that, I'm putting you into your breakout teams where you're gonna be on a team and you're gonna answer some really fun questions. We're gonna have two breakout sessions and then come back in for the answers. Um, so let me get started. Um, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. You hold the heavens in your hand. All stars rejoice in your glory. You come in the sunrise and the song of morn and bless the splendor of the noonday. The stars and their courses magnify you. Day and night tell of your glory. Your peace blows over the earth and the breath of your mouth fills all space. Your voice comes in the thunder of the storm and the song of the wind whispers of your majesty. You satisfy all things living with your abundance and our hearts bow at your presence. Accept us your children, eternal father, and hearken to our prayer. Bend over us eternal love and bless us. Amen. Amen. Okay. And, um, you might want to also put your Zoom right now into speaker view because we're going to have Elaine start us off. Well, that's and that's fine. Or you can leave it this way for a few more minutes, um, but probably does make sense um, for everyone to mute just so you can hear. So I am so thrilled to have so many people. And it, as someone who has been working from home, it's actually great to see people other than the people that I Zoom with all day long for work. So um, again, I'm, I apologize for jumping in late. That's you funny. said you got a lot of people. How many you got? Um, I think we're going to have about 20 different computers, and that's probably going to be between 30. Fantastic. That's so, great. Great. So you might want to put your computer on, on mute for a moment, uh, Bob, just so we don't get the feedback. But um, okay. we'll introduce ourselves and tell you how the game is going to go and a little bit about how we got to this point. So my name is Elaine Price. And I'm married to Gordon, and I am an environmental biologist by training, and um, kind of came to Cleveland accidentally to uh, do a three-month internship with the Standard Oil Company. Some of us are old enough to remember Sohio, and um, I've worked in the environmental field doing a, a lot of other things. So you want to tell a little about yourself? Sure. Here? I came to Cleveland in 1963 <laughs> as an infant um, from uh, St. Louis not St. Luke's, but uh, Rainbow Babies. So uh, um, there's one person on here who knows me from Sunday school when I was an, an infant, but uh, um, exactly. Mr. And Shire. Mr. Shire. And uh, let's see, so I'm trained as a geologist and uh, have been working in marketing for many years. And I'm really excited to, to be sharing some of these nature uh, trivia with my Fairmont family. So what we did, uh, um, gosh, about six, seven years ago is we started a business. And basically, I had taken an ecotourism vacation before I met Gordon many years ago uh, out of uh, New Mexico, where you hiked the first day and you biked the second day and you rafted the third day. And then you repeated that, stayed at these lovely inns, ate at these great restaurants. And you know what the best part of the whole thing was? I didn't have to make one decision the whole time. It was just all organized. And I wondered why nobody was doing that here in Northeast Ohio, because we have such great nature in Northeast Ohio, and it's deeply connected to our history and our heritage. And kind of in a nutshell, if we think about our land and our water and go back a couple hundred years as people were migrating from the east into the middle of what we call the country, there were they stopped here because the land and the water and the natural resources created something that would help them work and that work would keep them alive. Some of that work turned into businesses. Some of those businesses grew into corporations. Corporations generated lots and lots of jobs for other people to work as well as wealth. And that wealth gave us art museums and orchestras and hospitals and natural history museums. So <clears throat> I wanna tell the stories of innovation that rise up out of the land and the water that we have. So we named our business Naturevation 
to tell the stories of innovation that rise up out of nature. So when we do our tours to make it interesting, we do, he does most of the research. We have learned so much about Northeast Ohio by studying our nature and we put them into these little quizzes. So <clears throat> what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to be bringing up a PowerPoint and um, we're going to do our, our questions in batches. So we will show you a slide and it'll have a question on it and then a second one, a third one, and a fourth one. And because we know we have so many families at Fairmount, we actually created, or we really pulled from some of our tours, some of our more kid-friendly questions. And then Christine will put us all into breakout, put all of you guys into breakout rooms. Each breakout room will have a captain. And I believe that some of you have been asked ahead of time to be captains. And you're also sent a handout um, because once you go into the breakout room, you will no longer see my screen. So we're suggesting that you look at the handout or we're really suggesting that the team captains share the handout on the screen um, because we've done this before and people have said, oh, I need to see the picture, I need to see the picture. Um, what I will also do is I will copy the question and the, the different multiple choice answers into the chat function so if somebody wants to see that, um, you can see that as well. And then you're gonna have um, um, about 10 to 12 minutes in each session, and then you'll come back. And um, we did send out scorecards if, if the captains wanna kind of keep score. Um, and what we'll do is we'll call out the answers and then we'll tell you, we'll, we'll share a bunch of more pictures and we'll share uh, more depth of information about these places um, where we're showing you and the questions come from. So I think that's everything. Um, and we'll do that twice. And then we have a couple of bonus questions at the end. And we also have a, a slideshow of Fairmount people who have come on our tours. So did I miss anything there? That's pretty good. I think we're pretty good. Okay. So um, I am going to bring up the PowerPoint. I'm moving you all over to this other and, and Elaine, are we allowed to use research or are we just supposed to answer it off the top of our heads? These are not allowed. Oh, we've all got computers sitting in front of us too. <laughs> These are not allowed. So, um, oh, the, the other thing is really guys, it's, you know, this is about Fairmount people getting together. That's really why we're here. We're just using the nature Sorry stuff. So um, captains, please uh, assure that when you go into your breakout room for the first time that everybody introduces themselves just in case someone doesn't know somebody. And again, um, don't belabor your questions too long because you won't get through them. And if you do get through your questions before you're called back to the main room, then chat. Um, I really would love to hear from you all, uh, what are some of your favorite nature places or have you ever been to any of the places that we're talking about in the questions. Okay, so I am going to start the presentation and share the screen. I have one question. Sure. I'm a group leader. There's eight questions in the presentation. Are the two bonus questions something you're gonna show? We're gonna do them as a group. We're gonna do them as a large group. Okay, thank you. Can you see the screen? Not yet. Okay, I'm getting a message that I'm sharing the wrong screen. So let me just double check. I can see, oh, I could see it. I could see it. I could see it. I could see it. It's gone you now. You can see it. Okay. <laughs> so we've already, so here's your first question. In which reservation is the first parcel of land acquired by the Cleveland Metro Parks? Is it Euclid Creek, Mill Stream Run, North Chagrin, and Rocky River? And don't call out the answers now because you want to wait until you are in with your breakout group. So question number two, who carved these? A Native American, a farmer, or a University of Akron student? Question number three, and this is actually in Northeast Ohio. Which river is this? So this is a write-in. 
and it's worth two points. And then where, and we're like, we're looking like for the name of a city. And then we got a couple different animals here. Let's match the animal to its name. Okay, so I am going to copy the Oops, I'm gonna send you into your breakout rooms, but I'm trying to copy the uh, questions first. Yeah, and I'm having. Yeah. Hold on, my Word document. Cooperating. The one right now. The one behind you. No, no. The bonus question. The answer to that is farmer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. Wait till you guys get in your rooms. We're going to put the questions up and then I'm going to send you to your rooms and we're going to have about maybe 10 minutes in each room and I'll bring you all back in. Okay. All right. Also, hello to the Henry family. I didn't recognize you at first. It's so good to see you. Great. Where are they? Are we all here, Christine? We are all back. So go in ahead. Every, everybody go try to go on mute for now while Lane shows the answers and explains. Get some families. Great. Okay, so um, we're probably going to have you um, because you're all on mute, so you can't really shout out um, the answers, but. Um, I'm gonna ask you kind of like for thumbs up and things. So um, which which reservation was first to get the uh, Cleveland Metro Parks? How many of you said A, Euclid Creek? Okay. How many of you said B, Millstream Run? How many said C, North Chagrin? And how many said D, Rocky River? Okay, and the answer is Rocky River. <laughs> <laughs> So I think what's what's really important about this is um, I don't know does any I don't know if anyone who knows who this is but this is a fellow by the name of William Stinchcombe, and he's a key player. He was born in 1878. He was self-taught to become a surveyor at a very um, early age. He became the chief engineer of parks for the city of Cleveland. And um, he also then a few years later ran for elected office as the county engineer. Now he recognized that two things, that we had on the west, the Rocky River Valley, a very steep valley that we shouldn't be building on. Same thing on the east and you could- He's asking if you're showing an image. Are, are you screen, I'm screen no. sharing. No, um, the screen sharing's not showing. You have to. There we go. Okay. And um, so this is William Stinchcombe. And he had this vision. He also knew at that time that the air pollution in the city of Cleveland was so bad that people needed to get out and get to parks. So he envisioned our modern Metro Park system. And um, we call that the Emerald Necklace. This is the fellow who was kind of responsible for coming up with that. And the problem was in Ohio, we did not have a mechanism for creating Metro parks. So William Stinchcombe essentially marched down to Columbus, got the, um, con the General Assembly to change the Ohio constitution so that counties could create the infrastructure and levy for a park system. And the first piece of property uh, is in the Rocky River Reservation. This is a point in that place where there's a carol on there that is a memorial to him. And we took a bunch of gals um, stand up paddle boarding in Lake Erie. And then we came up to this place to hold our picnic and to tell the story of the history of um, how the Cleveland Metro Parks got started. And it's how every single uh, county Metro Park system in the state of Ohio. So that was pretty important. So, okay, Gordon's going to go over the next question. How many of you think that the people who carved this were Native American? 
How many think a farmer? Okay. And how many a University of Akron student? Okay. Okay. And it was a farmer. <laughs> William Geppert in the 1800s <laughs> was an amateur stone carver who ventured into the rock formations near Peninsula known as the Ritchie Ledges. The ledges were named for two brothers who were farmers in the area, William and Samuel Ritchie. The geology of this area is a 30 to 50 foot thick sandstone rock strata called the Sharon Conglomerate. Uh, a conglomerate is a collection of multiple size material. And in, in this case, it's sandstone and then small quartz pebbles. If you see at the bottom of the photo, some uh, horizontal lines, and those are the quartz pebbles in the sandstone. Uh, the early settlers even called it pudding stone because it looked like potatoes in stew and they used to call stews puddings. The land around the ledges is called the Virginia Kendall area. So named because Virginia Kendall's son Hayward owned the property prior to the park. Hayward Kendall, a coal baron from Cleveland who loved to ride his horses in the area purchased the Ritchie farm as his country estate. He left 430 acres of the property to his wife in 1927 with the stipulation that it become a park named for his mother. <laughs> Kendall's wife donated the property pretty quickly in 1929. <laughs> We're kind of wondering if it's because he didn't leave it in her name. <laughs> it became the Virginia Kendall State Park and was managed by Summit Metro Parks before becoming part of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Okay. And um, those carvings, they're not very large. This is an interesting crevasse. You have to kind of know how to get off the beaten path. But this, the carvings that we were showing you are about this size. If you see where my cursor is, Gordon is kind of right in front of them. So it's a really wonderful place. Show of hands, how many of you have been in this area and been down to the carvings? Okay, great, great. Okay. Oh, we have to share a couple of other pictures here. You wanna? Sure. Does anybody recognize the van in the upper left-hand corner? That was a Fairmont van once upon a time. And uh, before we purchased our own van, we, we worked with Fairmont and ran two tours um, of Fairmonters and people from community of St. Peter. And uh, so many of you may know two of the people in this photo, Gina and Matt Kashik. <laughs> At the time, they didn't know each other. So this is this is the first time that they got to meet each other. They started dating, what, two or three months after this, these photos were taken. Right, we call it nature date. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so which river is this and where is it located? And the answer is, it is the Cuyahoga River and it is in Cuyahoga Falls. <laughs> yeah, oh. major cheering. Lindsay obviously is kind of getting that right here. So um, the Cuyahoga River is interesting. The, I think most of us know the name that is, comes from uh, the Mohawk language or this, and the Seneca language. Mohawk language meaning crooked and the Seneca meaning jawbone as in shape of a jawbone. And the reason is, is because it is, we think it's crooked because it's squiggly up here in Cleveland, but it actually starts up in um, Geauga County with two branches that come together at Burton. And then it flows south through four different counties and makes a turn in the Cuyahoga Falls area and then comes back north. So it was a big surprise to the early settlers who said, hey, we're on this lake and we found this river. And if we take this river, we'll get into the center of the state of Ohio. We're going south, we're going south, we're going, we're not going south anymore, guys, we're going north. And that's why, that's why it's called the Crooked River. Um, it's 813 square mile watershed, flows through four counties and actually drains water from six counties. It's about 1,100 feet elevation up here down to 570. So it's a 522 foot drop. And most of that drop happens right about here. And it has about uh, 25 different tributaries. And we like to do a paddle from um, the Kent area 
to the Cuyahoga Falls, Monroe Falls area. And it's a great place to then stop and do a, a picnic and really enjoy the Waterworks Park. So um, Cuyahoga River, great, very naturalistic river when you kind of see it. Okay. Okay, now we're going to match the animals. So what was your answer for number one? Oh, they're on mute, so they can't call out. Okay, so <laughs> how many people, wait, raise your hands. Um, well, why don't we click them and then see who got right. All right, fine. All right, who, who got beaver for number one? All right. <laughs> Did you get fox for number two? Yep. Okay. Lindsay's family's doing great. I, I hope everyone got skunk for number three. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> And groundhog for number four. Awesome. And uh, so this is a beaver, beaver in Pippin Lake in uh, Portage County. Uh, just a beautiful area. This, what I'm looking at right here, is an Indian mound. So the trees are grown up over the mound and the fences around the mound, but that was built as a burial ground for Native Americans. Beautiful structure there. This Metro Park is called Towner's Woods and it's just outside of Kent. And um, it's a really beautiful place to go with this interesting history. Um, and I'll throw out one other kind of point having to do with the animals. Um, one of our counties is actually named after an animal. Uh, the word Giaga was a Native American word for raccoon. Oh. And so um, that was uh, another piece of interesting kind of information there. Okay, so now we're gonna um, introduce the next four questions and you'll go back into your breakout room. So let's head west. The city of Lorraine was called Station 100. Why? Because it was the halfway point of the 200 stagecoach stops between Philadelphia and Chicago, because the premium grade steel Lorraine produced, because Oliver Hazard Perry captured 100 British warships, or because enslaved persons escaping to Canada knew it as the last stop before their voyage to freedom. Ooh. Oh, good Let's go back to the Cleveland area. So the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve was originally a shipyard service area, a Cuyahoga River dredge repository, a special landfill with ships and cars. Oh, don't you hate these? Oh, this must have been written by a teacher. <laughs> a and B or B and C. <laughs> and now let's head east. From which Lake Metro Park can you get this view of Cleveland? Penitentiary Glen, Chapin Forest, Farm Park, or Lake Erie Bluffs? And then let's do another matching exercise. These are different recreation device, winter sports equipment, the bobsled, the sledge, the sled, and the sleigh. And let me. All right, let me just copy the uh, questions into the oops, short one. Mm -hmm. And bring up the chat. So I think Bourbon's team also has a bit of an advantage. Because? Because he was like the chief of police for the Metro Parks. So oh. he knows them all. Way to be. I know that. <laughs> we got some ringers in here. <laughs> You're supposed to tell people that, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Christine, you can put everyone in your breakout rooms and we'll see you um, after the break. Yeah, here we go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is there's a minute timer on the breakout room. So I'm going to go ahead and close them. People don't have to rush out, but I'll open up um, the ability to come back. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. All participants have been given 60 seconds to leave the breakout rooms. And I would just.
Hi, Nana. Hi, Nana. It's great to see you, Nana. With Jan. So, Brian, good luck with all that eye stuff. My, uh, my family has a, I haven't had it yet, but my family, my father and my brother had tons and tons and tons of detached retinas. I stopped, I stopped counting the number of detached retina surgeries my dad had after about 12. <clears throat> so. Well, fortunately, I never have to have, a, I've never had to have surgery yet. This is exactly the same thing happened in my left eye four years ago. I was working on my car out in the garage and I turned my head and I saw a flash of light out of the corner of my eye. And I thought, and I thought, is there a thunderstorm? It's not supposed to rain. <laughs> and then I kept seeing this flash of light, um, you know, throughout the day. And then I went to church and I was coming home from church and all of a sudden I'm looking out at the sky. It was unfortunately it was overcast. And I'm looking out and I see like a curtain of all these dots and it's in 3D and it's moving wow. in different directions. You know, it's, everything's cascading down. Ooh, that's scary. So I called the eye doctor and met him at the office. He says, yeah, you got a partially detached retina. It's, um, uh, it's, you know, we don't have a tear. It didn't tear, so that's good. And uh, you got some floaters in there and they'll eventually dissipate or your brain will um just cancel out the fact that they're there yeah and not pay attention to it okay good so, okay. same okay. thing that's interesting but thanks yeah. sure i just want to say any every, something real quickly so um some of you guys are on mute we do want us to be able to talk with each other so feel free to come off of mute if you have something to say but um if you kind of sense that there's a lot of background noise where you are. After you're done saying what you want to say, put yourself back on mute so we can kind of keep the audio clear and everybody can hear each other. But again, if you have something to say, take yourself off mute and say it. And um, I'm going to give the floor back over to Lynn. That's partly because I just want to hear Lindsay's household screaming every time that they get an answer right. So <laughs> I will unmute for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, because it's more fun to kind of hear you guys uh, calling out the answers. So um, feel free to unmute. And uh, again, let me ask the question. The City of Lorraine, Station 100, what was the answer? How many of you said A? Halfway point? Okay. How many said B, the premium grade steel? How about C, the um, captured British warships? And how about D, the enslaved persons? Okay. And the answer is you are... Right. It is D, the enslaved person. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So um, Frederick Douglass told enslaved persons, um, follow the North Star to freedom. And that meant Canada. And that made all of the Great Lakes critical for people to get across to Canada, particularly our Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Um, so to get there, yeah, and the, the number 100 is a symbolic number that means completion or a 100%. So it doesn't necessarily mean that Lorraine was literally the 100th stop on the Underground Railroad, but it meant when you got to station 100, you were at 100%. That was your last stop before getting across the lake. This wonderful sculpture is located in a park right along the Grand River. And I'm sorry, the um, Black River. Thank you, Gordon. I got my counties mixed up. Um, and it's commemorating the, um, you know, the, the plight of people, enslaved people who are going for freedom. Um, we love this area. We do a couple things here. One of our favorite tours is through the steel mills. And these are the old waste piles from the steel mills. Then we climb into kayaks and we paddle the Black River through the, the steel mill areas. There's been an enormous amount of uh, restoration projects that have been going on. Fish shelves for spawning of fish, a heron rookery, and quite often uh, bald eagles are sighted. So it's so interesting that we know that guy. Um, the, the route that once um, was used to transport enslaved people onto boats to get across Lake Erie is now used as a place for recreation uh, paddling and fishing enjoyment. Um, 
the Lorraine County has done an amazing job of preserving their Underground Railroad history. Another one of our favorite tours is a bike ride from Elyria. And this house used to be a stop on the Underground Railroad. We ride on the North Coast Inland Trail, which is a rails to trails, uh, about nine mile trail from Elyria to Oberlin. And then when we get to Oberlin, we do a tour around Oberlin and stop at eight different locations which commemorate um, slavery, the Underground Railroad, and freedom. And this is just an amazing sculpture done by um, a student who went on to become an architect in front of one of the dormitories. So it is a railroad coming up from under the ground. Mm. And it's just a really emotional um, it's my favorite sculpture that we have there. So, okay. It's a, and so we, we really um, like the tours that we do in Lorraine County, so. Okay, so number six, was this a shipyard service area, a Cuyahoga dredge repository, um, a special landfill or D or E? How many said A? Okay, how many said, how many said B? How many said C? How many said D? And how many said E? Ta da! Okay, it was both a dredge. <laughs> <laughs> the hair is great. <laughs> you're reeling in. So it was both a dredge repository and a landfill. Uh, and in 1962, two freighters were sunk to create a break wall to protect the shore and industrial use. In 67, Cleveland used this portion of Lake uh, of the lake as a city garbage dump. You'll see Doan Brook coming out there being channeled into the lake. Um, by 1969, more than 8,000 cars had been dumped and buried in this 10 acre landfill. 1,000 trucks per day brought trash, which was burned here. Some days the smoke was so thick that it impeded traffic on the shoreway. From 1979 to 1999, the Army Corps of Engineers expanded the site to an 88-acre uh, repository for dredge material from the river. It was called Dyke 14 and contains more than 5.7 million cubic yards of dredge material. It was fenced off from people, seeds carried by wind and birds revegetated the land and today it's managed by the Cleveland Port Authority but is a beautiful park. Um, it's got a 5,400 uh, foot perimeter, two and a half miles of trails, just beautiful trails, um, beautiful views to Bratnall to the east and downtown to the west. This is a group of Lubrizol employees. Um, great spot for birding, yoga, and, and our brunch tour. Um, it has, you know, 300 species of birds, 42 species of butterflies, um, some reptiles and uh, other mammals, uh, uh, 26 Ohio plant species, just a really wonderful um, park. Um, and then we have time for a luncheon after one of our tours. Gordon, I have a question. Okay. You said it's right west of Bratinol? Yes. So it, a little tidbit, did it used to be rocky uh, all along with, with some sand along that beach before they build it all out? Yes. Yes. I have always wondered, Walt and I were at reserve in 1954 mm. and we went out and I've never been able to find the spot since. And that's where Walter proposed to me in 1954. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, it now I, as I looked at that, I thought that's what happened to that piece of land because we would drive out uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Yeah, and it was yeah. right out there at the end of that. Yeah, exactly. I'm amazed you taught us something tonight. Gordon Park extended all the way out to the lake. Uh, there was no shoreway. Um, back in the late 1800s, there was a dance hall out there. Um, it was a quite a park. It was. There was a gentleman named Gordon who's, um, who had his estate out there uh, and then he deeded it to the city and the city turned it into 
a wonderful place to um, go swimming, uh, go dancing, uh, just enjoy the Doan Brook was extended quite a ways into the inlet and they did um, canoeing in there. Mm -hmm. So just lots of wonderful memories. I'm so glad you shared your memory with us. <laughs> so I think we have two Tony. things. So, I mean, I, I, like I talking about Euclid Beach. Or is um, it farther out? Euclid Beach would be a little bit further to the east, east. Bob, but this was oh. this was another version of Euclid Beach. Okay. Yeah, the dance hall type thing. Cool. So I, I vote that we have a Culberer reunion out at the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve and have <laughs> Walt reenact the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the car. <laughs> um, but I also remember a couple weeks ago, uh, Pastor Lindsay shared on Facebook um, a video from this area. And I remember you saying, I'm not really sure where I am. And I was talking to the computer going, you're at Gordon Park, you're at Gordon Park, <laughs> right there. And we like to go jump on the rocks that are right there. Mm -hmm. Super fun. It, we'll just kind of blow through this again real quickly. Um, very interesting that these freighters were sunk in order to be a break wall. This is Doan Brook trying to go out uh, while the city, can we imagine that we actually intentionally put a dump right into the lake itself? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember How did they that. ever get rid of those ships though? I don't remember. They're, they're still there They're underneath. still there, Bob, they're yeah. underneath. And then this is all garbage and trash. I remember that. Burning it. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, then what is so amazing that Nobody went in and planted anything. It happened. Here's the deal, guys. Nature always wins. In the end, nature always wins. So all of the vegetation that's here was brought in by seeds carried by birds and the wind wow. and revegetated on its own. And it has quite a bit of diversity. This has become one of the most important migratory bird flyways that we have in the area. And that's because the birds that are either flying north or when they're flying south, they have to fly over the lake and there's no place to land and there's no food when you're flying over the lake. And so they have to have a place that they can either take off from or land after, you know, after that long journey. So really important there. And you know, this is an example of a trail. This is looking at Bratnall. And then this next picture is looking uh, west towards the city. And uh, we have done, uh, we have a friend who is a yoga specialist and a birding specialist. And so we have done some hikes with her to do some yoga and birding on this area. So that's kind of fun. Did they put any dirt on top of everything before the, the, it was nature, naturally uh, seeded by the birds? Actually, the dredge material coming out of the Cuyahoga River, um, you know, there was some concern, especially during the, the 60s and the 70s about contamination. but if you've ever been on the river and you see them scooping the, the dredge material out, it's getting very coarse material. So it's actually kind of a sandy, soily type material itself. And that is actually what revegetated. It had a lot of organic matter in it, but no, no one went out there and actually laid down soil. They might have actually capped certain sections of it to um, keep any contaminants in, but they did not go down and put soil on there with the intention of, of planting trees. Hmm. Pretty amazing. Great. Okay. So how many of you think that the answer is we're standing at Penitentiary Glen? Nope. How many think Chapin Forest? Okay. How many think Farm Park? How many think Lake Erie Bluffs? Okay. Da, da, da. It's Chapin Forest. <laughs> Very good. So this site was originally called um, Gildersleeve Mountain, and it's named uh, after this fellow by the name of Fred Chapin, who actually was a Shaker Heights guy. Um, he was originally from Iowa, and he was like this technical overachiever. He studied chemistry, physics, and engineering, and metallurgy at the University of Minnesota somehow ended up in Cleveland, worked for the National Acme Corporation and became its president. And he was president there until age 82. Now Chapin loved nature. 
And he and his wife um, actually had a chalet on the Chagrin River, which he designed. And um, he really, he really loved that area there. Um, we'll tell you how it got over there. But the, um, kind of like Gordon was talking before, this is a Sharon conglomerate um, sandstone type of formation about 300 million years old with um, Sharon conglomerate on the top and Berea sandstone on the bottom. There were two quarries in this area and sandstone from this quarry pond was used to build things in the area, particularly the Kirtland temple, the Mormon temple out in Kirtland, if you've ever been to that. Um, so you can again see, and we know this guy, we know that guy in here, but the same kind of uh, formation with that pudding stone that Gordon was talking about before. And this area is also a, a winter sports area. But to prevent the area from being sold into development, uh, Chapin purchased a bunch of the land. In 1949, he donated 390 acres to the state of Ohio. And actually, the Lake Metro Parks actually lease it back and manage it. So uh, that is Chapin Forest. And you ready to talk about mm -hmm. our matching exercise? So um, we have four vehicles here and- You can unmute yourselves and tell us. How many people selected number one as- What do you think number one is? Bob Sleigh. D. Sleigh. Sleigh. That's a sleigh. Yep. How about number two? It's three. It's a fox. Oh, three. <laughs> 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 right, it's a sled. How about number three? Sledge. That's a sledge. Okay, we got people that actually know what that is, and that leaves the bobsled. Bobsled. Bob sled. Okay, and so <laughs> here have actually used one of these vehicles. Well, everyone's used some. Okay, everybody's probably used a sled. Has anybody used any of the other three? No. Sleigh. Okay. The uh, sledge in Boy Scouts. Exactly. Oh, great. So, so why don't you explain what a sledge is? Danny, um, exactly. So I use the sledge in Boy Scouts also. So we would uh, use the sledge and do races uh, at Winter Jamboree. So, a lot of great memories. So a sledge is kind of for moving heavy objects or transporting people. And uh, so then you want to list off the places that we're going to show them up. This is so Towner's Woods. Uh, this is in Geauga County, Orchard Hills. This is our own Forest, um, Forest Hill Park. And who's that handsome guy at Keene Park? So lots of different places to go sledding in our area as well. Okay. So um, we got a couple. Keene Park. <laughs> All right. We are going to um, we'll do two more questions that we're going to kind of do as a group. So I don't know if it, have any have you ever been to Jaga's Observatory Park in Jaga County? Okay. Well, <clears throat> this place earned. Let me make sure I get my notes right. Um, a silver rating to become a designated night sky. And what institution gave that designation? Is it NASA's, the Millennium Program, the International Dark Sky Association? The American Astronomical Society or the Daystrom Institute? B. B. Can I lose this A? B. 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 Okay. B or not to be. Okay, B or not to be. And you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. It's the International Dark Sky Association. So, does anyone know what um, the, the Daystrom Institute is? Don't we have a city light oh. around? No. Well, the Daystrom Institute, uh, anybody a Star Trek fan? It's not a real organization. It was the fix, fictitious scientific research and teaching organization of the Federation. Mm. It's always fun to throw those in there. But well, so I, the International Dark Sky, Sky Association was founded in 1988 to protect night skies for us and future generations from light pollution, which is the inappropriate use of artificial light. And why do we care about that? It's because it impacts um, a lot of biology. So it messes up the night and day cycles of feeding, of uh, reproduction, of migration of insects, birds, and, and other animals. And so Observatory Park 
was the sixth place in the world to be designated a night sky wow. place in uh, 2011 and it got a silver rating. Um, so it really is a phenomenal place to go and they do have these wonderful programs. So um, in addition, there is a NASA Warner Swayze telescope that used to be on the campus of Case and the Oberly telescope built by a guy named Norm Oberly, who was a charter member of the Cuyahoga Astronomy Club. And then there's a really cool- Out of this uh, observatory. This um, uh, sculpture, the sundial and a meteorological uh, windmill. And then they have these cool formations. So this is like a Stonehenge type of um, structure. And then they have this wonderful trail that goes around the meadow. And there are four of these things. And you can see another one right over here. And anyone know what these represent? Let me guess. These are located on a square 756 feet apart. And they are to scale representing the corners of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So you, you can walk around this trail and you can stand at any one of these and you can look back over here and you can Did look back over there. one of the Heron Lewis's guess that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Max said it's a pyramid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's yeah. right. um, so it's really kind of amazing to, without having to travel to Egypt, to go here and get a sense for how big those pyramids really are. And then um, they do um, this wonderful, they have a, a, an observatory and they have a really entertaining uh, astronomer who does this amazing um, you know, program that is fun for adults and kids alike. So very much uh, recommend that you get out there. If, um, if the sky is not clear and they can't actually use the telescopes, then they do the program inside at the observatory. A really cool um, fact that I learned at this observatory I'd never really thought of before. How many stars that you see in the night sky are in the Milky Way? And the answer is all of them. You can't see any stars outside of the Milky Way with your naked eye. So. Yeah, so. That's great. All right, here's our home stretch question. Can we do this? Can we name the Great Lakes? <laughs> Everybody just shout it out. Yeah, let's um, a little bit about the Great Lakes. Um, do you want to talk about the information or? Sure. 180. So um, the oh, Great just a second. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the Great Lakes. Um, the Great Lakes represent 21% of the world supply of surface water, 84% of North America's surface fresh water, a volume of six quadrillion gallons, in case anyone's counting. Uh, the combined surface area is 95,000 square miles, which is larger than the state of Texas. The Great Lakes provide drinking water for 40 million people and they have 10,500 miles of shoreline, which is equal to traveling from New York to LA round trip. Indeed. So long. All right. So number one, what lake is number one? Superior. E, E. There we go. It's Lake Superior. How about this one? Number two. Huron. Huron. Number two? Oh, Michigan. That's like Michigan. 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 There we go. Michigan. <laughs> how, about number, how about number three? Three, Huron. 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 Thank you. I'm looking for the Chevros. We're getting the Chevros are getting this one. Good. How about uh, number four? Yeah. 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 D. <laughs> okay. Last one. I hope we can get and the last one is Ontario. Very good. Right. So some bonus questions. Is the word Huron is inside what some people consider another body of water? Do you know what that's called? No. Hudson. Not Hudson Bay. You're close, Bob. It's the other one. <laughs> I can't say it. The Shides know it. Been there. Georgian Bay. Georgian Bay. Hey. Who was Georgian that? Bay. Very good. Wow. Very good. And how about this little guy right here? He wasn't big enough to be considered. This like is like, 
Blake St. Clair. Blake St. Clair. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Blake St. Clair. So. You can wonder. <laughs> so um, just so fun. That's our game. And um, just kind of scrolling through some more pictures and would love to hear from you all. Um, I actually do have another PowerPoint I want to scroll through that will actually show all of the different fair mounters who have been on our different tours. But uh, what did you think? What are some of your favorite spots? Did you learn of any places that you've never been to that you might want to go to? Pretty hard. <laughs> Competing with Jeopardy. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, very well put together. Thank yeah, you. great Thank job. You. Thank yeah, you. Great. Learned an awful lot. I, uh, um, great trip. I do want to um, just show this one. And uh, hear from you all. On, um, We're looking forward to Fairmount or hikes now. We're all allowed to be within six feet of each other. So here, are, um, you could just see some other folks and we kind of thought that um, maybe Pastor Lindsay will, oh, you want to pray us out? Gordon's going to yes. pray us out as we um, just scroll through these faces of different folks. So I found just a, a prayer by Walt Whitman. Why should I wish to see you better than this day? He's speaking to God. I see something of you in each hour of the 24 and each moment then. In the faces of men and women, I see you. And in my own face in the glass, I find letters from you dropped in the street and everyone is signed by your name and I leave them where they are for I know that wheresoever I go, others will punctual, uh, punctually come forever and ever. Amen. Great program guys. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon and Lane. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Who won? Who won? Yeah, what? <laughs> what <are your> teams? <laughs> oh, oh, Lindsay, shout out your score. <laughs> oh, he's just such a guy. Go side. Yeah. Get back. We all yeah. won because we all got to learn. How about um, let's go from who are the different captains and call out your scores. So um, how about There's the doctor. Chevro team. Well, I don't know what we didn't answer the last two because those were bonus, right? Right, right. But we got them. We all got that one. We all got. Okay, so we're adding. We include those two, or we exclude them. You can. Well, you can put them in. Don't ask. Just include them. (laughs) (laughs) No. Okay, come back to us. We're going to add them up then. Okay. How about the Seekly team? Um, unfortunately, I had a, my Zoom went out and I could not be in the first group. So my first four answers, I don't know. I answered it myself. We came up with 17, but um, I'm sure that maybe the other people in the group would have got the first four. No, they did, actually, because I was facilitating that and they got all of them, correct? Oh, they got all of them. And, well, and one, well, one of them was worth two points. So there are okay. five points there. All right, so let me add it up real quick. Our team got 19. <laughs> okay. 19. Okay, several team, 19. How about the Keller team? 17 on this end. 17 on that end. And we got 20. Okay, and were there any more rooms, Christine? Or was it three rooms or four rooms? There was four rooms. The Mills, the, the Mills team. Yeah, Keith Mills. Keith, you're muted. You're muted. Uh-oh. lost. <laughs> Don't know. Did we lose? Yeah, we only missed one question, uh, and that was on. It was uh, partially my fault on the uh, on uh, which river it was. Uh, the the one with the waterfalls. Otherwise, we we got them all correct. Okay. So uh, how many points that is? So then you would have had nineteen. Yeah. So it sounds like the Chevro Mills both had nineteen. And somebody had twenty. 
Yeah, Good. our team had 20 if they got all the first four. Okay, well, it sounds really close. And uh, what are fabulous prizes we're giving away? Hey, <laughs> we have for each yeah. of you an individualized snowflake. And if you <laughs> outside your door tomorrow morning, it'll be right there for you waiting. <laughs> Gee, that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for bringing us together. Yes. Yeah, thank you. It was a great, great And program. we even had a dog join us. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was great seeing everybody. Walt's gone oh, down to try to find some dinner. So I'm I'm yes. leaving, but thank you all. Good to see you, Jean. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Sue, I'm going to give you a call.